and the word of our testimony, amen, which is hearing the word, and so we're excited about that. 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to go into 1 Peter chapter 1, we've been talking about the power of the blood, this is our uh, third week on that, and uh, just understanding that there needed to be the shedding of blood, we know that Adam and Eve, uh, we know that they offered sacrifice, we know that those sacrifices, they, they, they clothe themselves in animal skins, and, and this was all done after the fall. But after the fall, there was a blood sacrifice required to have them move forward in their lives. And then we know that with Adam and Eve, remember we talked about the, the Cain and Abel controversy. Do you remember that? Everybody got all, you know, not this church, but churches have been all, oh, well, God was really miserable to... to, to uh, to Cain because he had vegetables and so he should have been able to offer the vegetables and that should have been enough. And, but how many know it wasn't about the intent, it was about that he knew to do better and chose not to. You know, there's an old saying that they taught us in college, it said, if you knew to do better, you would. And so, uh, something that's important in your life that... He, he was taught by his parents, Adam and Eve. He was, you know, he could have, remember in the sermon we talked about how he could have went to his brother Abel and purchased an animal to offer as a sacrifice. He could have maybe borrowed one. He could have said, I'll give you a basket of peppers. I don't know. But he knew that the, the offering of blood was a nece necessary thing. He knew that the offering of blood, I mean, you know, we, we know to do simple things, right? I mean, we know when you're, when you're you know, it's something as simple as you're going to go on a tea run for your family. In my mind, I can picture who drinks what and how they do it, and I know how to make sure it gets done right. And so in your life, God has begun to birth something on the inside of you. And when you know what the Word says to do, the Bible says that once you know the Word, it will set you free. But it also says if you know what you need to do. And so we saw that, you know, offering the sacrifice of the vegetables versus the offering the sacrifice of the lamb was not what God required a blood sacrifice. And so we talked about the bloodline, and the bloodline being, you know, if you would, going from your life up into heaven and back down, because of Jesus, there's a bloodline, that you can count on that. Uh, we talked about that, Patience and I, last week, about the bloodline around our families, and, and, and the bloodline, you know, uh, uh, you know, as my daughter travels up north or wherever they are, that you can begin to plead the blood, because that takes the onus off you doing the work, and allows the work of Jesus to do the work. Because you can't possibly figure it all out. You can't know what they're thinking and going through at, at, at one exact moment or where the enemy is going to try and sneak in. And we know that the bloodline will encompass them and protect them. How many know we've got family members in situations that you need to plead the blood over? Amen. And so we've been encouraging that and talking about that because it takes the work off of you because Jesus did the work at the cross. He didn't just overcome rigor mortis. He didn't just say, I'm just going to be raised from the dead and everybody say hallelujah. He was raised from the dead and now he actually says we're raised with him. And he said because of what he accomplished by going to, if you would, covering and comp uh, attacking death, hell, and the grave, he won a victory for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Where's Hannah? She went to Sunday school. Sunday school. We have, did we have yeah, somebody? We're just, we're did we have Sunday school? Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're, we got to get into the word here. So 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 20. We're going to look at this. Uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 20. I'm going to read out of the message today, so you can just relax if you like. You can look it up in your Bible, but um, I've really been comparing the two, and it's just, it's just some really neat uh, um, scripture. It says, Your life is a journey, and you must travel with a deep consciousness of God. It costs God plenty to get you out of that dead-end, empty-headed life you grew up in. He paid it with Christ's sacred blood. You know, he died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought. Even though it, it was, <clears throat> even though it, it has only lately at the end of the ages become public knowledge, God always knew he was going to do this for you. It's because of this sacrifice, the sacrifice Messiah, whom God raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God, that you know that you have a future in God. You need to get that. How many know today you have a future in God? You say, Pastor, I don't feel like I have a future. I don't feel like I have a hope. And that may, in the natural, feel very real. 
But according to this, it says you need to trust God. How many know trust is just really letting go and just saying, Lord, I'm trusting you to take care of my situation. I'm trusting the blood of Christ to take care. Now, that doesn't mean we kind of just lie down and just let Satan just do whatever he wants to do in our lives. But we need to also trust that God is going to give you the victory. Come at it from a point of victory. Remember when you were kids at the schoolyard and you were the first one to make it to the snow hill? Wasn't it called King of the Castle or something like that? I don't know. Does anybody remember? But when you made it to the top of the snow pile, it was easy to knock those guys down. I was the chubby guy at the bottom, so I never made it to the top. But, but, but you know, it was easy to knock those guys down because you were already at the top. Well, you've got to begin to look at your life like that and say, in Jesus, not because of you, but because of Jesus, you're at the top. Now, that truly means that the enemy and all those little stinking things that go on in life are going to try and climb that hill and pull you back down. You ever get around somebody that just pulls you down? You just feel like, man, they just suck the air right out of my sail. You know? Well, that, that's sometimes if you're starting at the bottom of the hill trying to climb with them. You've got to instead, I mean, don't become arrogant, but you've got to begin to say, because of Jesus, I'm doing what God's called me to do. My faith and hope and trust is in him. And the blood of Jesus was never going to lose its power. It is never going to lose its power. And the call that God has for me, I will accomplish. So your hope isn't in what you do. Your hope is what God is doing through you. All right, people sort of say, say, Pastor, how are you doing? And sometimes I'm honest and say, well, today's not such a good day or today is a good day. And I can say that in the flesh, that that's the truth. Okay? Sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it's, it, it is good. I like to have Sandra around a lot. I like to keep busy. Those are things because otherwise I can sometimes feel like my balloon just begins to deflate. Okay? But I say that, but in Jesus, God has covered and accomplished what he's doing in my life. God is not orchestrating those, if you would, down days. Don't get me wrong, that's flesh stuff. But Jesus, through the blood of Christ, has promised me to have victory in this life. And so we just need to get from that point to that point, saying, well, maybe I feel like I've maybe fallen halfway down the hill. We just need to begin to get back up. It says, he paid with Christ's sacrificial blood. How many know you're covered in the blood of Jesus? He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. So sometimes we try and self-sacrifice, sort of like, you know, um, the self-sacrifices, you, you're going to overdo things to somehow get God happy about you, right? You, did, you didn't pray last night, or you didn't do your daily bread, or you didn't do your devotion, or, or you, you, know, you, you made a mistake and, and, and you fell into sin and, 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 and something happened. But what you need to do is begin to say that sacrificial lamb is pleading the blood. It's like a waterfall that's continually flowing. The blood is continually flowing. You just need to get back under the blood. It doesn't stop. Do you understand that? You ever been to Niagara Falls? That water never, ever, ever stops. It doesn't stop. I guess it does if it really freezes, but technically I think it's still going on underneath. But the point is, it doesn't stop. You've got to remember that, that when the enemy comes along and says, oh, you blew it one too many times, understand, you just get back under the waterfall. Just get back under the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I, I, I repent. I just give this to you, and I thank you that your blood never loses its power, and it cleanses me from the top to the bottom of my feet, and you get going. And so that's what God is saying here. And, and so understand that God always knew he was going to do this for you. Isn't that interesting? From the beginning of time, the Bible says that when the word became flesh, it dwelt among us. Jesus, from the beginning of time, knew. He knew he wasn't surprised when Adam and Eve sinned. God never says, uh-oh. Now think about that. Right? Think about that. June, when you have road rage, God doesn't say, my goodness, what am I going to do? She doesn't really have road rage. But God doesn't say, uh-oh. God never has uh-oh in your life. He knows the beginning and the end. The good news is because of Jesus, it's covered, it's covered, it's covered. Now, that doesn't give you license to go out and just do whatever you want to do. That greasy grace that says, well, I'll just be in sin and God's just all okay. No, but God's saying, I want you to come under the blood of Christ. Because in the blood of Christ is your victory. You've got to stop trying to do it on your own strength because you can't do it. The only victory you ever can have is because Jesus won the victory. If Jesus had to win the victory, that should be good enough to say that if he won it, I'm just going to get under the blood flow of Christ and I'm going to receive it. If he was my sacrificial lamb, I'm going to receive what he has done for me. So 
when, when Jesus was coming from the beginning of time, he knew that Jesus was sent, even, even though Adam and Eve sinned. God still put them in the garden. He knew what was going to go on. God didn't say, my goodness, what do I do now? Jesus, from the beginning of time, was on his way to redeem mankind. Now, the blood was shed in the garden for sin. We know that with Adam and Eve. We know that Cain and Abel. We know that those situations there, the, the, the vegetables versus the shedding of blood. Now, we want to look at, uh, understand that the main point in all of this is that God requires the shedding of blood for the remission of sin. Okay, that's the requirement. God always provides the sacrifice. You want to remember that, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I've got lots of time here, so we're good. Uh, Genesis 14, 14. 